Good day, Grade Tens. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful Monday morning and afternoon. My bad, sorry. Monday afternoon. Um, we started on trigonometric functions in the last lesson, which was last week, Wednesday, a long time ago, I know. And today we're going to carry on with looking at trig functions and how changing the amplitude and the shift, or how to change the amplitude and the shift. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at an example of y is equal to minus sine theta. But before we do that, I actually want to just look at y is equal to sine theta. And what I'm hoping you remember is that the amplitude that we had was 0, 1, 0, minus 1, and 0. So the original of sine theta, if we made this 1, of sine theta, should I say, was I went from 0 to 90 back to 180 back to 270 and back to 360 so it went up and down and there we go now we're going to look at y is equal to minus sine theta minus sine theta so what we're going to do is we're going to pop that into the calculator for 0 90 180 270 and 360 and see what happens to it so let's get out our calculator okay and i just want to shut this down so it's out the way there we go okay so what we want is minus sine theta okay so this time we want minus let's switch on minus sine of in this case it's zero degrees close zero close the bracket wow it's a bit slow today here huh? equals naught okay so that there is zero now let's try minus sine of 90 so we're going to go minus no let's just clear it minus sine and remember what i said to you guys you guys make sure that it's always in degrees not in radians because if it's in radians you're going to get it wrong and that is going to be minus one so that is minus one now let's try 180 it's a bit irritating this thing pops away here. Okay, so let's have a look at this. We're going to clear it and it becomes minus sine of 180 close bracket equals and that is zero. So that there is zero. I'm not going to write it in because it's going to disappear. Um, let's look at 270. So I wonder if I can go. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Oh dear. Minus sine of 270 is going to be 1. Okay, so therefore that's 0, 1, and now let's choose 2, 360. So we're going to go up, oh, and then hmm, um, delete, 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 delete. delete. 360 close bracket equals naught. Okay, so that's zero. So if we plot that point, see now you can see that when theta is zero, minus sine theta is zero. When theta is 90, minus sine of theta is minus one. We're assuming this is minus one. When theta is 180, we go back to zero again. And when theta is 270, we up at 1, and then it's back to 360. So this time you can see that what happens wherever the, the theta values, do you agree that they obviously don't change? What happens to the y value? Do you see that it's actually a mirror image across the x-axis? Well, as best as I can draw it. So what is the amplitude? The amplitude of this thing is still 1. Okay, it's still 1 one unit. Why? Because that is the maximum distance from the zero line. Okay, so the amplitude is one. But the range is still minus one to one because you're including it. The period 
is still 360 degrees because it takes 360 degrees to complete one wavelength. So we've got that still 360 degrees. But what has happened? Do you agree that the difference between sine theta and minus sine theta is that the y values have become negative? Yeah, the y value was x is 90 and 1. Here it is 90 and minus 1. Here it is 270 and 1, and here it's 270 and minus 1. Okay, do you understand that? Right, now let's go look at this. Now we're looking at sine theta plus 1. So again, just to make it easy for ourselves, I'm just going to draw on sine theta in, where it's so 0, 1, 0, minus 1, and 0. So if I had to draw in sine theta, it would be 1, 0, minus 1, 0. So it's going to be just like this. And grade tens, that's what I do. When someone asks me how does it change, I draw a little, this is honestly what I do in exams. I go doing, and then I go, okay, that's one, and that's minus one. And then I know that that's at 90, 180, 217, 360. I'm already sorted. So now when I do things to it, now we consider what we're doing to it. I can then shift it left, right, up and down, realize that it flips, whatever. And then it's very easy to work out, okay, which is why I'm drawing this for you. So now we're looking at what happens if we add one. So what is happening is we're adding one to the y value. Do you agree originally y was equal to sine theta? Okay, so hang on, let me go back here. We had y was equal to sine theta, okay? When sine theta had theta equal to zero, then the whole of this was zero, right? But now we're adding one. So effectively we're saying, sine theta was at zero degrees, well sine of zero degrees was zero, plus one is one. Sine of 90 degrees, we know equals one, but now we're adding one, so it ends up with two. Sine of 180 degrees was zero, but now we're adding one, so it becomes one. Sine of 270 degrees was minus one, but now we're adding one becomes zero. And sine of 360 degrees was zero, but now we're adding one and it becomes one. But just to prove this to you, let me just do at least one of these. So let's do sine 90 plus one. So if we do that, we can say, well, it's sine of 90 bracket plus one. And you see we get two. Let's do sine of 270 just to show you. So let's go back and then delete. And we go 270 and then equals, and you'll see we get back to zero. So you need to think about it in that sense. And so now if we had to draw this last term, I mean this last one, y is equal to sine theta plus one using the purple, when x is naught, when, the, when theta is naught degrees, y is one. When theta is 90 degrees, y is two. When theta is 180 degrees, y is one. And when theta is 270 degrees, we're now at zero, and then back up to 360. So do you see that what's happened is that this is the new curve? And do you see that what's happened is we've actually just shifted up by one unit. We've shifted up by one unit. So that makes sense if you think about it, because what are we doing? We're in y is equal to sine theta plus one. We've taken the sine theta, whatever the y value of sine theta is, and we've added one. So therefore, this dude here shifts it vertically. So obviously, if we subtracted one, which way would it go? It would go downwards, right? Makes sense, right? Now, let's look at the standard form. So this here would be the standard form where y is equal to sine theta or sine x, where at 90 degrees, we are at one. And at 270 degrees, we're at minus one, and obviously you would 180 and 360. The number in front of it is the amplitude. So that's going to affect the vertical, and it's not going to shift it. It's just going to make it taller or shorter. 
okay if it's a bigger than one number then it makes it taller and if it's smaller than one in other words it's a diffraction it's going to make it smaller and if it's negative what happens it flips it okay q shifts the graph and which way does it shift it it's a vertical shift q is a vertical shift so we've got a sine theta plus q so we either are making it bigger or smaller or flipping it and q is shifting it up or down okay now let's look at the cosine rule cosine graph so again we're going to start off with y is equal to cos theta and we're going to look at the values for 0, 90 180 270 and 360 okay so again we're just going to get out our calculator and we're going to go cos of 0 equals 1 okay cos of 90 hmm equals naught so that's naught okay and the next two three i'm going to do but without taking a calculator away i'm sure we can remember them cos of 180 equals minus one okay then cos of 270 is naught so we've got minus one zero and cos of 360 is what what is cos of 360 okay so 360 equals one so what do we have we've got minus one zero and one so what does our cos graph look like when x is naught y is one when x is 90 y is naught when x is minus 1, y is, I mean, when x is 180, y is minus 1. When x is 270, y is 0. And when x is 360, y is 1. So therefore, this graph looks like that, more or less. Okay, it would be neater. Okay, and remember, you don't want bumps like this and like that, okay? So you're going to be using a pencil and you're going to use an eraser when you make mistakes, please. It's very important. So what is the amplitude? Do you agree that amplitude is the maximum distance away from the zero line? So that case is going to be one, right? It ranges how far it stretches across the x-axis. So this would be from minus one to one, okay? And the period, do you see that at this point here, it's gonna start going down and then it'll be, we start repeating this, but so the period again is 360 degrees. Okay, now let's look at the next question. Now we've got y is equal to 2 cos theta. 2 cos theta. Okay, so again, let's think about this. We just plotted y is equal to cos theta. We just plotted cos theta. So cos theta was 1, naught, minus 1, naught, 1. Okay, let's just check it. 1, naught, minus 1, naught, 1. Okay, now we've got 2 cos theta. So this is y is equal to cos theta. Now we're saying y is equal to 2 times what that is. So in that case, do you agree that 2 times 1 is going to be 2? 2 times 0 is going to be 0. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. 2 times 0 is 0. And 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, so that means that if I had to plot these two, let's plot the first one first. y is equal to cos theta. We start off at 1. Go to 0 minus 1, 0, and 1. So it's going to be down and across and up. And then let's do this one. This time when x theta is 0, it starts off at 2, then 90, then minus 2, then 0, and sorry, that's two because it's two times one, which is two, two. So do you see that this graph has the same shape, but it is much steeper and it's got a much bigger amplitude. 
please don't do what I just did. Okay, I unfortunately don't have a facility for a new razor. So if I do this, watch what happens if I do that. Oh, wow, it didn't do it. Normally what happens is it raises whole graph. Okay, so, right. So you can see that now the amplitude is much bigger. So this time the amplitude is two and the range is minus two, two, two. So the range is actually four times bigger than it was before. No, twice as big, it's twice as big as it was before. But the period still remains the same. It's still 360 degrees. Okay, so do you see that this number in the front affects what? It affects the amplitude of the graph. It affects the amplitude. Okay, now let's look at this one. Y is equal to minus cos theta. Okay, so now you've been doing this for a while. I'm hoping you get into grips with what is happening with these values. Okay, so let's start with cos theta. We know that if cos theta is going to be 1, 0, minus 1, uh, 0, 1. Okay, so it's going to be 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 1. And then we just have to go along and join the dots. And there we go. Now I've got y is equal to minus cos theta. Remember, so what are we doing? We are saying that it's the negative of whatever this cos theta was. This is y is equal to cos theta. This is going y is equal to minus whatever the cos theta was for that value. So if cos theta was 1, then y is equal to minus cos theta is going to be minus 1. Cos theta is naught. Cos of 90 is naught, therefore it's going to be 0. Minus 1 becomes plus 1. Naught remains the same, but 360 becomes minus 1. Okay, now we can plot it. So do you see how easy it is once you know the basics, which is why I always teach the basics and then ask my grade tens to memorize it. Because if you memorize it, then it's very easy to work out whether you're flipping or switching or moving over or up or whatever, okay? It's always easier if you remember the basic one. So when x is naught, okay, y is minus one. When theta is 90, cos of theta is gonna be zero. When theta is 1, cos of that is going to, I mean, when theta is 180, it's going to be 1, 0, and minus 1. So do you see that this is identical to the purple line, except that it's the mirror image? Okay, what well, it would be if I could draw. So therefore, we can say that it just flips across the x axis. It just flips across the x axis. So the amplitude again is going to be 1 because the maximum distance it is away from the central line is 0. The range is going to be from minus 1 to 1 and the period again is 360 degrees. Okay, the period again is 360 degrees. Okay, let's look at the next one. Now we've got cos theta plus 1. Cos theta plus 1. Let's think about this again, and again I'm going to draw this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a couple of minutes, grade tens, to just try this for yourself. Just work out the numbers. I'm going to give you a hint first. I'm going to say to you, right, we know that cos theta equals 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and 1. Okay, there's my hint. Now you try and work out what cos theta plus 1 is. I'm going to give you two minutes or a minute to do it. Try now. Okay, so you can see that I've already drawn the cos theta, the basic graph of cos theta in now. So now let's work out what happens to cos theta plus 1. So remember what I said to you? This is the value of cos theta when theta equals 0. Now we're adding 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 0 plus 1 is 1. Minus 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. And 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, so now we can plot it. 
So when theta is zero, this set, yeah, cos theta plus one is two, that there is 90, that there is 180, this is one and this is two. And we can go along and we can go up, oopsie, and there you go. So you can see that what has happened. Do you see that this graph has just moved up by one unit the whole way through? Okay, so this plus one does what? It shifts the graph up and down. So what is the amplitude now? Do you agree that the amplitude, how far is it away from the x-axis? Do you agree the amplitude is now two? Because that's how far it is away from the x-axis, okay? Its range is zero two. Okay, its range is zero two, but the period is still three hundred sixty degrees. Okay, so A messes with the amplitude, and Q shifts the graph. Okay, so A messes with the amplitude. It either moves it, makes it bigger, or smaller, or it flips it. Okay, Q shifts the graph vertically, vertically. Okay, now let's look at the tan graph. Now the tan graph is interesting. Okay, and since you're in grade 10, we only do the positive half of the tan graph, which is very interesting. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop these numbers into a calculator. I don't know why that's there. It's supposed to be up there. Okay, so we're going to go tan of zero. So tan of zero, close bracket, is zero, okay, tan of 45 is one, okay, so we've got zero, one, then we've got tan of 90, and it's going to give you a math error, okay, and I'm going to write you undefined, okay, then we've got tan of 180, okay, tan of one, let's clear this, tan of 180 is zero, tan of 270, tan of 270 is undefined, and tan of 360 Tan, clear. Tan of 360 equals zero. Okay, so these undefined or math error things are interesting because what they are are called asymptotes. And over here, the tan graph has got no value. They're called asymptotes. So when x is 90 degrees or theta equals 90 degrees, tan graph has got no value. When theta equals 270, the tan graph has no value. Right, so we know that tan of 0 is 0 and the tan of 45 degrees is 1. So do you agree we know it goes up like that, but it doesn't touch, okay? Now, the only other thing we know at the moment is the tan of 180 is naught, okay? And the tan of 360 is naught. That's all we know. So why don't we find a number between 90 and 180? Let's try 135 degrees, which is halfway between them. So we're going to go tan of 135 and close the bracket and it equals minus one. So at minus one we're at minus, I mean at 135 we're at minus one. What happens if we were 225? So this here would be minus one. What about 225? Okay, 225 is 180 plus 45. So if we do tan of 225, oopsie, new, delete, equals, that's 1. So this is going through, 225 is going through 1. 
So what this graph does, and this is why it's interesting, it has a point of inflection at the 180 and it goes through there. I can apologize for bad drawing. Now what happens if we have two, what is it, two, two, five, it's going to be adding, okay, so you want 270 plus 45 is going to be a 5, 4 and 7 is 11, carry 1, 315. So let's go 10 of 315 and you get minus 1. So 10 of 315 is minus 1. So this graph does that, more or less. Okay, that's it, more or less. Okay, so do you see that the time graph is very interesting? Because the amplitude is infinity. It carries on forever and ever and ever. It's going to get closer and closer to the asymptotes but never touch. So the amplitude this time is infinity. Infinity. The range is from minus infinity to y is smaller than infinity. Or just y is an element of real numbers. But the period is how long it takes this graph to repeat. And do you agree this looks like half a graph? It looks like that half. And this bit here looks like that half a graph, okay? So therefore, the period is from there to there, which is 180 degrees. So therefore, the tan graph is very interesting. Tan graph, okay, so let's think about this. The sine and the cos both have a, a period of 360 degrees, okay? The tan graph has a period of 180. Now let's look at what happens if you've got y is equal to 2 tan theta. So again, I'm just going to plot tan theta just so that you guys can understand. So this becomes 0, 1, undefined, um, 0, undefined, um, 0, and then we tried, what did we try? We tried let me just remind myself. We did 135 and 225. So we're going to have 135 and 225. We might go between 270 and 360. We'll see. Okay. So with tan theta, we, this was 135 was minus 1 and 225 was minus 1. No, it was plus 1. Okay. And we did do 315 as well. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to go there and we're going to go 315. Okay, and do you agree that that was minus 1, 1, minus 1? Okay, so tan of this was, there was an asymptote here. And there was an asymptote here at 270. Okay, and y is equal to tan theta. It's going to be 0, 1. It goes up like this. And then it goes zero and it goes we and then up and across and then it goes down and across like that. Excellent. So that's the original graph. Now we got tan two tan theta. Okay, two tan theta. So we've got the original tan theta, okay, and we're multiplying it by two. So what's naught times two? Well that's just naught, okay? But one times two is to undefined remains undefined because it's the same as saying infinity. So therefore that remains undefined. 2 times 0 is 0. That remains undefined. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. So when x is 0, when theta is 0, y is 0. Cool. Now, when it's at 45, instead of it being at 1, we now have it at 2. So this graph does this, okay? If it's this way, minus 135 is going to be minus 2. So it's going to be yeah, okay? And at 225, it's going to be a positive 2. So you can see that what's happening is the gradient is getting much deeper. It still goes through the significant points. It's still going through 180, 0. And over here, it's going to be that this is 2. So it's going to be much deeper as well. So what is happening to this 2? What happens to this graph when we have multiplied by 2? We mainly are going to mess with the amplitude. 
But what's interesting is that you can't really tell an amplitude on a tan graph, but you can. The only point that really makes a difference is this 45 degree one. Yeah, on the red graph, when theta is 45, y is 1, okay? Whereas on the blue graph, whatever you want to call this color, it is going to be 45 and 2. So do you see we've doubled the amplitude? So the amplitude here is just going to be theta, okay, because that's how far we were, I'll go away from the zero line. The range is from minus infinity to infinity. Did I say theta? I meant infinity. And the period, again, is 180 degrees. Okay, understand. Right, now let's look what happens if we've got minus tan theta. And again, let's draw normal tan theta. So if we draw normal tan theta, we've got that this is an asymptote of 90 degrees. This is an asymptote of 270. And then it goes to 45 and 1. So it goes up, goes through there, and through there, and through there. So it goes like a little bit of an S bend there. Terrible drawing. And then it goes from the bottom up. Okay, so that there is a normal tan theta. This is a normal tan theta. Now we've got minus tan theta. We've got minus tan theta. So do you agree this value here was 0, 1, undefined, 180 was 0, 270 was undefined and 360 was zero and then we did 135 we did 225 and we did 315 okay and those values were 135 was minus one 225 was positive one and 315 was minus one okay so now let's play with this and this time we've got y is equal to minus tan theta so if we let tan theta equal k then do you agree that it would be y is equal to minus k so whatever that equals we're now going to multiply by a minus so naught times a minus number is just going to be naught but naught times by i mean one times by minus one is minus one the undefined things remain undefined nothing changes there and naughts remain naughts but the minus one becomes a positive one the positive ones become a minus one okay so that's pretty obvious okay and now we just need to plot it so when x is naught y is naught when x is 45, y is minus 1. 90 still remains beautifully drawn in as an asymptote. At naught at 180, okay, 135 is plus 1. 225 is minus 1. 225 is minus 1. Hmm. Okay, right. And do you see that it's now forming a mirror image? Okay, similarly, this one was forming a mirror image. So what are we doing? We are swapping an X and Y value. So this is also going to form a mirror edge there. Okay, so what is the amplitude? Again, the amplitude is to infinity. The range is again going to be minus infinity to infinity. And the period again is going to be 360. But do you realize that we've got two totally different graphs? Just because the range, the amplitude and the period are the same doesn't mean that the graph hasn't changed. Now I've got y is equal to tan theta plus 1, and again I'm going to draw the original. So tan theta, okay, so it goes through 90, and it goes through 270, and then we know it goes up like that, and this is 45 degrees and 1, and then it does that, and then finally it does that oopsie let me just fix that last little bit it does idiot sorry oh where did it go did i just erase everything i did i did again let me try again oh this is so frustrating sorry guys y is equal to 90 y is equal to 270 goes up Okay, now we want tan theta plus one. So we know that normally 
it will be going through zero at zero. Tan, tan of zero is zero. But now we're adding one. Tan of 45 is one, but now we're adding one, so it becomes two. Tan of 90 remains undefined. You cannot add a one to it. Tan of 180 is zero, so now we add a one becomes one. That's still undefined. Tan of 270 is going to be undefined as well. Tan of 360 is going to be zero plus one, which is one. And then let's think about this. What are the other numbers we did? 135, 225, and 315. So it's 135, 225, and 315. Right, so when x theta equals 135, do you agree that normally we'd have that the, th the whole of tan theta is minus one? The whole of tan theta is minus one, but now we're adding one, so it becomes minus one plus one is zero. 225, again, if you go up, is plus one, so one plus one is two, and 315, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's go through this. Um, so now we've got when it's naught, it's going to be plus one. Okay, when it's 45 degrees, it's going to be two. Okay, and we just going to carry on like that. When it is 180, it's going to be one. When it is 270, it's going to be undefined. And when it's 360, it's going to be naught plus one, which is one. Okay. Then when 135 is now going to be at zero and 225 is now going to be at two. So do you see that it actually follows a pattern of exactly the same pattern? It's just been moved up by one. So it's going to be moved up by one. So it is just going to do something like this. Okay, so what has happened? Do you agree that amplitude has remained the same? It's still infinity. The range goes from minus infinity to positive infinity, but the period also remains the same. And the period is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so theta doesn't make, it doesn't make a difference to theta what we do here. We are now moving this graph up and down. So if, we've, if we had to, Summarize, do you agree that A is the amplitude? It's going to change the steepness of the graph, whereas Q shifts the graph. Okay, so A not only sorts out the amplitude, but it also, please understand that it makes um, a positive or negative. Okay, remember that it's either going to make it bigger or smaller, bigger or smaller, but it also shifts, it, I mean, um, makes it flip. So it makes it flip across the x-axis, okay? Whereas Q shifts the graph, and we're talking about a vertical shift, a vertical shift. Okay, let's see what else we got. Right, so now we've got a proper question. We've got, we've got some exam paper questions. So as you're aware, after each section, I like to do some exam paper questions just to make sure you guys are actually understanding what we're doing. Okay, now it says, the following graphs are given, f of x is a sine x plus b, and they actually tell us which one's f of x. So what I'm gonna do is get out the highlighter, it's gonna make it easier for us, and they say f of x is a sine x plus b, okay? And this here is f. Okay, that's f which is interesting because of the fact that it's starting at minus one, I mean at one. This green, this black one, which we're gonna now make green, light blue or green, is going to be g of x, which is equal to c sine x, and that's g of x. Okay, so now, do you agree that for the first one, f of x equals a sine x plus b, they want a, b, and c. A is the amplitude, right, and B is the shift, the vertical shift, the vertical shift. So which way do you think the yellow line has been shifted, okay? Normally, do you agree, the sine graph looks like this. It goes up and down, and that there is 1 and 90, and this here is 
270 and minus 1. And suddenly it is shifted. Okay, now, and normally it's at 0. Okay, now instead of it being at 0, it's now at 1. At 90, it's now 2. Okay, it's normally going through the axis at 180. It's not. So do you agree it's been shifted up? So therefore we can say that B is definitely been shifted up by one okay it's been shifted up by one now let's talk about a which is amplitude okay so if i had to draw a line along here okay let's pretend how far is this graph away from the imaginary zero line and do you agree that the imaginary zero line is made in kinet so that it is only one unit away from it Therefore, A is 1. The amplitude of this graph, the yellow graph, is 1. Okay, now let's talk about G of X equals C sine X. In this case, we're talking about the sine C sine X, okay? So we want to know what C is. Well, normally, your sine graph goes through 90 degrees and 1. Now it's going to 2. So this value is your amplitude, so that is 2. Okay, right, so then this here again is your amplitude, g of x is equal to 2 sine x. So if we had to write these out, we'd have f of x equals a, which is 1 sine x plus b, okay, and the b is how much it's been shifted up, and it's been shifted up by 1. g of x is going to be c sine x, but that's how much will be multiplied by. In this case, it's 2 sine x. Okay, grade 10s, we will carry on with this question in the next lesson, which will be on Wednesday. But if you want to, why don't you try it by yourselves? Next part of this question just says, which values of x is f of x equal to g of x between 0 and 360 degrees? Okay, try that, and we will continue with nice exam paper questions um, in the next lesson, which is on Wednesday. Have a great day.